morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it is, whenever you are watching. My name is Haley and this is the Loch Ness Knitting Podcast. There is no knitting content today. Today I'm going to do a little show and tell of some quilts that I have made over the last few months. I've had a pile of quilts uh, growing and growing and growing near my sewing station just for various reasons like I'm holding on to them or some of them got sent out to be quilted, some of them I needed to buy more fabric for, like there's just a bunch of different reasons that I ended up having this gigantic pile of quilts building up around my home and before I get them off to their respective homes I wanted to take a special episode to just kind of like review them all. If you are not a quilter I would encourage you to stick around anyway, even before I was doing my own quilting. Uh, I love like quilting YouTube, uh, the videos, the tutorials, the walkthroughs, show and tells, like all that stuff. It is a good time and these quilts are really pretty if I do say so myself. I will try to link as much information in the description box below as I can. That's where you can find all of my social media information, links to like my Instagram and things like that. But for the most part, like a lot of these quilts are improvised, they don't, 100% know how much like pattern linking I can do, but I will try my best. If there's anything relevant, it will be in the description box below. That being said, I would encourage you to take some inspiration from this video. I am joined today by Chicken Darling. She is back here. Uh, Chicken Darling has her own quilt. She is borrowing my coaster that usually sits on my desk. This is a little uh, quilt as you go situation that I made for myself. I always need like a little spot for like coffee, tea, beer, water, you know, whatever it is that I am drinking. It was chicken darling size and I thought I would bring it on for her to join in the fun today. If you are interested in this really big pile of quilts that I have to share, let us get into it. I'm gonna start from oldest to most recent, most recent being a quilt top that I finished about 30 minutes ago. But to start, I saw my younger sibling, Elliot, on Christmas, no, it was not Christmas, it was Thanksgiving, and we were just talking, chatting about quilting and like my projects and stuff like that. They like do a fantastic job of following along on all my like Instagram stories and everything, it's super cute. And we were reminiscing about how when they went to college, I made them, a crochet blanket. I'm pretty sure it was out of like Bernat blanket yarn. It wasn't even like anything special, but I had like a huge amount of this blanket yarn and I was like, Ugh, Elliot is like so crochet worthy, let's do it. And I had forgotten about it, it was years ago. They're now like a senior about to graduate this semester from college. And so it was many, many years ago and they were like, oh yeah, I love everything that you make and I still have that crochet blanket you made me. And I was like, what? Through this conversation, I was like, you need a quilt. Like, I need to make you a quilt. You're obviously quilt worthy. They were all about it, which was great. So I got kind of like the vibe of like, what is your, you know, decor around your apartment? You know what I mean? Like, tell me a little bit about that. So they did. Because we were hanging out over Thanksgiving back home in Pittsburgh, there was some pretty seriously awesome Black Friday sales going on in some online quilt stores. So. All this to say, I got a good portion of the fabric in this quilt for my younger sibling, Elliot, on a Black Friday sale. It was like a, it would have been a really big splurge, um, but it wasn't. It was just totally like fortuitous that all of this happened. So without further ado, this is the first quilt I have to share. This is a throw size quilt. It is patchwork and let me get some close up so you can see the quilting. I actually had this one sent out to be quilted. Um, it's easy to tell right here, but it's got this like almost Art Nouveau-y kind of quilt pattern on it. I love it. I thought this quilting pattern was beautiful. Like a more modern interpretation of the the Baptist fan pattern. I don't. I think that the Baptist fan pattern is, there's nothing wrong with it, but I do think it looks like a little like mommy, grandma, nana quilt. This has just like a lot more open space between the quilt pattern and I love it. The actual pattern of the quilt is uh, nothing. It's just some patchwork biz that I put together. So you can see that there is uh, some repeating fabric. So it starts with the black fabric. This is just black, like 
star pattern I got from Joann's. There is this sketchy little like single color print here. Some canvas, canvas adjacent. I don't know if it was like fully like full send canvas, um, but this fabric is a little stiffer. Um, and I did a quick Google search when I realized, so like this fabric came in the mail and I realized that it, I had mistakenly ordered the canvas. I did a quick Google search and it, the internet basically said like, it's fine to do like mixing of, of fabrics and stuff. Like when it's washed, they might shrink at a different rate. This was also something that led me to get it professionally quilted so that there was like more efficient quilting on it, I guess, if that makes any sense. But um, this is interesting. It's an interesting print. It's an interesting like finish. This was some Ruby Star Society, like little sparkly stars. And then I made my own fabric out of mini charm packs that I got as part of the Black Friday sale that I was shopping. And I, I feel like most of this fabric was like Ruby Star Society. To be honest with you, like I'm just not, I'm not quite there yet with the like knowing off the top of my head or like looking at fabric and saying like, oh, that's Ruby Star Society. You know, I just don't know. Um, I need a little more like experience with the fancy fabric. These were some mini charm packs that kind of vaguely went together. So I ended up putting them together into like these little clusters of four squares. But you can see, it's just like a repeating patchwork pattern. I'm trying to back up as much as I can here. Just a repeating patchwork pattern. And then I put a border that was the same width as all the squares. I put the border around the entire thing. And then I actually did the binding in the exact same fabric too. I really like, really, really, really like this black fabric with the gold stars on it. I think the gold or this shade of gold is not actually gold. It's like a, like a crappy kind of like mustard brown, but it goes with what, like whatever you put next to it, it just kind of like goes. It's one of those neutral colors, just works with everything. And then because I got it professionally quilted, I got to choose the backing from the long armors options that they had available. I just went with this like cutie polka dot. It's not the same orange as like this square on the front, um, but that's okay. It's like not the end of the world. I don't think it's a big deal, but just like a little added texture on the back there, but this is cute. It's like a lap, not a lap blanket. It's definitely a throw blanket. I think the dimensions like 60 something by like 70 something. I have it all written down. I'll actually talk at the end of the episode about how I've been keeping track of all of my like quilting journey and things like that. I have all the dimensions written down. It's done, it's quilted. It's going off to my younger sibling. They are tall, they're like six feet tall. I needed to make sure that it was like long enough to like actually, you know, cover their legs like as they're sitting on the couch. So this is this one. It's so cute. Uh, they said their apartment is like orange, black, emerald, kind of like dark blue color. So I went with like the moody color palette with like color pops. I think it'll look great on the back of a couch. So this is the first one. Super cute. Sorry I don't know more about the fabric. I am getting better as I'm like learning more and and kind of poking around in like the sale bins and stuff like that, of fabric stores and online fabric stores and things like that. But um, I think that'll just come in time. I've only been quilting for like a year. I'm probably coming up on my year anniversary of quilting. So I'm learning, you know, still learning. But I just love this. I think this is so fun. Next up in the pile, my very good friend Haley Nordstrom, who is North River Knits, is expecting her first child in May, I think. I'm pretty sure May. We are going to her baby shower, which is so exciting in the next few weeks. And when I tell you I've been trying to make a quilt for her baby for, I don't know, like two months, three months or so, um, I'm not joking. Like as soon as she said, hey, I'm pregnant, I was like, Okay, time to get quilting. I have made four quilts, two quilt tops, two quilts, four pieces overall, trying to get a baby quilt that is not like good enough. That's not the right way to, to describe it, but like something that I can be proud to say, like I made this for you and just none of them felt like good enough at all. So this actually led me down a 
a path that it is good it's fortuitous that this worked out this way but this led me down a path to donation quilts i actually stumbled upon uh, an Instagram account. I have not worked with them yet. Full disclosure, I have not worked with them yet. I've been following them for a couple of months, really, since all these projects started like falling through. I will put a link to their Instagram account below. If you are a quilter or someone who likes to make quilt tops and you just don't know what to do with them, I do think after following them for a while that this is like, it's such a wonderful nonprofit. This group. It, the Instagram account is Quilted Love Kids. The description of the nonprofit says, we are a 501c3 nonprofit whose goal is to handcraft quilts for children facing serious health challenges, trauma, and more. Uh, they're based in Texas and this, whoever is behind this account, um, I'm so sorry that I don't, oh, her name's right there. Wendy Allen Kerr. She is seriously like doing so much work. What I like about this organization specifically because i have seen like a few you know there's there's certainly groups that would be more local to me here in pennsylvania but this nonprofit is very active they're always working on like getting the quilt tops quilted bound put together there's photos of them handing them off to emts who like help young children they donate to hospitals like there's a lot of very like tangible evidence that these people work very hard. I don't know if it's just Wendy or if it's like a group of people, like I'm not really sure. They have a full website and the information for how to donate to them directly is on the website. But basically they have a preferred quilt top size that I'm, I think it might change. It might vary a little bit, but I'm pretty sure it's like between like 40, 45 inches to like, 50 inches um, the dimensions are on their website but they accept unfinished quilts if you want to just send like a quilt top or if you have like binding backing whatever like to go with it you can send that too but they accept these they quilt them on the long arm and then they you know process package them up and everything and get them to where they need to go they also accept finished quilts of really any size. They also work with local nursing home to them. So if there are quilts that are maybe not, not like age appropriate or size appropriate or, you know, whatever it is. But all this to say, this seems like a really wonderful organization. After I'm done showing these on this episode of the podcast, I'm going to fill out the, there's a form on the website that just says like who you are, if you need a receipt for like the donation, all that stuff, just to like log who it is that's uh, donating these things to the organization. So I'm gonna send these off later this week to this group. I have projects that just didn't work out for whatever reason, and I'm happy that they're gonna be going to a good home. So the first one is a finished quilt. It's pretty small. It's definitely like a baby, like preemie, newborn size quilt. It's really cute. It's just, I just, I just, you know, I just, I can't, We'll talk about it. So this is the quilt. This was a disappearing nine patch quilt. And I put all of my little squares together. I have a lot of like scrap squares from sewing all the project bags over the last couple years. Um, so I did a disappearing nine patch and then I put in, this was my first go at like sashing plot twist i like didn't do it right so when i quilted it like the quilting doesn't look like stellar there's nothing structurally wrong with it it's just that like i'm too particular that's fine but i have this cute fun quilt it's so sweet the backing fabric is this cutie pie alpaca like just darling so cute and then i did this like crazy yellow binding i don't love that but i think overall you know it's just fun it's just a fun little quilt but yeah so i did this whole thing quilted this whole thing and i was like mm, okay this isn't it which is fine so again nothing structurally wrong with this quilt i'm just a, a pain this was 100 percent scrap fabric which was nice um i like the disappearing nine patch i don't think i did it in a way that's like very aesthetically pleasing which is fine i don't think everything has to be aesthetically pleasing but would do again just with a slightly different execution that one is going to be donated it is finished so the finished size quilts don't seem to have like a required size dimension they'll just send them where they need to send them after i 
found that group and their listed requirements for unfinished quilt tops, I just had like a total urge to throw caution to the wind and make something like wild and crazy that I had no plans for. All I had to fit it into was like the dimensions at the time uh, that they were requesting. I have this quilt top here. <laughs> this was again, all like leftover kind of like scrap fabric. I think this is so fun. I haven't looked at this in a couple of months because it's just been sitting around. But I did more of the disappearing nine patch uh, and this is a lot more like reserved, but I just think this turned out so like goofy and fun. So you can see this like cute emerald cheetah fabric. I did the uh, purple square, which like displaced the tinier little purple bits. Um, and it's all on this like super bright, fun, happy little floral fabric. So again, this is an unfinished quilt top. I put some borders on it after I had done like the main piecing of the blocks. It's it was like not at the required measurements yet. So I basically just put like a top and bottom on it to like even it out so that it was the required size. But this was fun. This was fun to have like a wacky fun project with no, obviously like of course you still want to like plan it out and make it nice and everything, but it definitely was like a throw caution to the wind sort of project. Use fun colors, fun prints. I think the cheetah fabric is like super cute and it's been in my stash uh, almost since I started sewing in the first place. So that was fun. That was a fun little quilt top. And then my <laughs> other two <laughs> quilt tops that are gonna be donated. Um, I did the same thing where I basically put together all the pieces like the quilt blocks that I had planned out and then I attached the width and length to fit the required size that they were looking for. So this is actually a funny story, funny and sad story. I went to a fabric store around here in Northeast PA. It was a bit of a drive, but we were already like out of town and scoping it out and everything. So we go to this fabric store and it's so nice like totally knowledgeable staff like very wonderful fabric selection they sell sewing machines it was just like a blast sock and i went together it was a great time uh one of the things that i got was a fat quarter bundle to make Haley a quilt for her baby i pick out this fat quarter bundle and it's like cute colors and there's some little like nature prints florals little animals and stuff. And I basically just flipped through real quick and I was like, oh, this is great, like super cute, whatever. And I bought it. I brought it home and I actually opened it. And it turns out that it's not a fat quarter bundle. It was a bundle of fat quarters, but it was called a fat quarter soiree. And when I was in the store, I was like, oh, that's so cute. Like what a cute fun name for a fat quarter bundle. And I like didn't think anything of it. What it actually is, is a bundle of fat quarters that is curated by the staff at the shop, which I now know is normal. You can, there's iterations of that pretty much at every fabric shop and there's nothing wrong with that. I think I, like upon further inspection, I don't think these fabrics like really go together that well at all. I think there's, like no place for your eye to rest. Uh, I, I would not have put these together, but I'm also the idiot who bought the fat quarter bundle. So um, joke's on me. But anyway, long story short, I went to go make a trip around the world quilt. I did not use a YouTube tutorial. I just winged it from watching many YouTube tutorials in the last couple of months. That's like, I'll sit down and have my morning coffee, watch my podcasts, and um, I love watching like jelly roll tutorials and things like that. And the trip around the world, like I get it conceptually. It's like not difficult. So when I went to go sit down and actually do it, not only did these fabrics like really not work together that well, but I also like kind of boofed up the actual pattern itself. So I'll just show you what happened. And I don't think it's that bad. I, it's probably not as bad as I'm making it out to be. But this fabric is like very high quality. So I'm happy that it's gonna get a good home. Um, someone will like these colors somewhere. Uh, this is my messed up <laughs> trip around the world quilt. So um, you can see, let me get a little zoom in. This print right here, this one is the one that I think was on top of the bundle. And that's what really drew me in. I was like, oh my God, it's so cute. Look like the dark purple, the orange, the pink, like 
in my mind I thought, oh, this is gonna be a really fun way to have a quilt for um, a baby, and it won't it won't read as like baby, baby, like baby, you know? Haley Ann just doesn't like strike me as the type of gal who wants like baby, baby, like she's cute. She's like nature girl, and I was like, oh, this is so great. Well, like all of these, this, these are all the fabrics that were in the bundle. Like, this is too busy. It's just too busy for, maybe it's just this pattern, but like, I see how this was the fabric that they like based the bundle off of. I think for something this busy, like this is the focal point for me. So like this print and this print, like those are nice. They're a little more subtle, a little more subdued. Even like this, I think is like really nice. This I do not like this i do not like and i just kind of like suspended disbelief while i was cutting it up and putting it together and then i got way too far in and i was like this does this does not like this isn't what i wanted it to be so like is it cute yes it is not like something that i would give as a gift it's just like a little too like funky hokey for me i don't know how to say that without sounding like a brat but it just like i don't know so I am gonna donate this one. I put this nice plain, plain gray border around it. The part that I messed up on the trip around the world quilt is I thought in my super strong steel trap memory that you were kind of supposed to mix up the order of the strips when you're sewing the strip sets together. No, it's the opposite. You're supposed to keep them the same. Uh, and there are, there's like a million different nuanced ways for people to like have different takes on the trip around the world quilt. I don't think that like there's anything wrong with that. I just really don't like the way this turned out. But again, it's fine. It is what it is. Um, I basically got through this entire fat quarter bundle and then put the four like least offensive pieces together and then I have a second quilt top that's this exact same thing I had eight huge blocks all to no I actually had I actually had nine I saved one of the blocks that was just like totally went rogue and did not fit in with either of the quilt tops so I saved that to like cut it apart or maybe like make a pillow or something you know what I mean this is my quilt top failure and that's okay so the second version of this, this one was slightly less offensive because I, I was like so close to approaching the point. Like I almost got it, I was like so close. This one looks a lot better. It's a lot more cohesive. It's giving like big granny square vibes, which is cool and cute, but you know, see my earlier complaints. But I think these will be lovely. I think it would be, really fun if there's like an opportunity to give these quilts to like a set of twins or something like how special would that be you know so i know that these will serve someone well they just did not serve me for my purpose finally 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 after all that time i made a quilt for Halian's unborn child <laughs> I found myself in the bowels of the fat quarter shop clearance. I tend to search on the fabric store clearance section of like any online fabric shop a lot, like for a source of comfort, which is sad, but it's just really true. I just love like seeing what's on sale. I feel like I, I can make really any fabric work those two other quilts I just got done showing you like 11 seconds ago, not my finest moment, but normally I can make anything work. So when I look at the sale section, I always feel like inspired, like, oh, this is just, like I'll get this and like make it work, or I'll get this and this will match something I have at home. Like I, I totally understand the fabric hoarding situation that happens to all of us because it's, you know, you're making things for other people, you're pairing things together that you already have, or like this print is gonna look great in this, fabric, you know, whatever. And I am still a huge sucker for pre-cuts, which I know is like, when people start quilting, of course the pre-cuts appeal to us, you know what I mean? Because the, the prints are so fun, you get the variety. They are usually like packaged very aesthetically, which I like, I'm a total sucker for. But anyway, so I, again, was in the clearance section of Fat Quarter Shop. I 
always look for mini charm packs in the clearance section. I have used a good bit of them at this point. I have some just kicking around my stash, but it seems like I feel very inspired when I get them. And when I buy a bunch of mini charm packs, they get used up quickly and then they're out the door. So I found some mini charm packs that were so sweet. I do not know who made them or what the line was or like whatever, I don't know. But look how sweet. We've got some little papayas, yarn balls, a lot of texture, knitting needles, just so cute. So this is the quilt that I finally decided is good enough <laughs> for Haley and I just love it. This one I think ended up being like 40 inches by 44 or something like that. And I actually already washed it. So uh, the specific failure on this one was the quilting itself. And I finished the entire thing. And after I had quilted it, I realized I had forgot to change my stitch length to something that was appropriate so on one hand like there was there was stitching that was too tight like when i had quilted it the whole thing was set way too low so it like pulled on a lot of the fabric and it it pulled on it in a way that like i'm a psycho and only like i'm gonna notice it like no one is gonna be like oh this quilt is awful because you quilted it with too small of a stitch like this is not gonna happen but like you know how it is like so i said I will wash it. I should wash it anyway. It's a baby quilt. And I use like, you know, the, the undyed, unscented laundry soap and everything for it. So I washed it and dried it and I got the crinkle and the crinkle factor like totally made me feel like this is exactly what I want it to be. It's so soft now. Like it's so soft. It's very like sumptuous and fluffy and cute. Um, and I just did like straight line quilting. Yeah, I think you can see it. I just did straight line quilting in one direction here. And like maybe if you're looking, you can see where the fabric pulled, but that's none of your business. That's my business. So I think these prints are so sweet. I just did like a like little nine patch blocks. I think I ended up using like six or seven mini charm packs, roundabout, something like that. And they were all the same line of fabric. Like it was the same mini charm pack. I just bought like seven of them. And I think they were on sale for like $2.50 a piece or something. And I just love, like I said, the variety of it, the colors, they're like already put together in a way that is matching and appealing. And this does give off like sweet little baby vibes, but I just love the, you know, knitting needle representation. We got the yarn balls and the fruit and stuff like basically checking all my boxes so this quilt is already washed it is made with love is it perfect no but god makes imperfect creatures and that's just fine i have this oh i love a crinkly quilt it's just so lovely and nice i can't wait to wrap this up for her very exciting stuff well worth the wait my coworker at my old tattoo shop is also having a baby and she's having a baby shower the weekend before Haley Ann. So I knew I wanted to make her a quilt too. And I found more mini charm packs on the Fat Quarter website. This one, I took an entirely different direction and I got mini charm packs that are like baby baby i have been to my co-worker's name is k i've been to k's house before k is like queen of neutrals there's like white cream beige like all like her house is flat it looks like a pier one catalog it's beautiful um so i did not want to make her something crazy and colorful i wanted to make her something like very toned down very muted and like soft sweet baby baby i used the, I think it was called Sweet Dreams mini charm pack. And I'm pretty sure I used like five or six of those. And then every other block is this marbly, like kind of gray 
fabric here. This was yardage that I just had like kicking around in my fabric drawers for a while. I bought it by the bolt because it was so texture neutral that I said like I will absolutely use this entire thing like no question. And I'm really glad I had a lot of it. I burned through most of it just doing these little squares. I did the, did I do the binding with it? Yeah, I did the binding on there. Yeah, I just love it. I grabbed each of these squares in like no particular order while I was sewing. I am a big fan of chain piecing things and not using any pins. So everything's just kind of like wild west at my quilting setup. And even more exciting than the cute prints and the layout and how everything worked and all that fun stuff is that I went down a journey of free motion quilting on an actual quilt. I don't know like what bee I got in my bonnet, but I was like, I am gonna figure this out. Oh, I know exactly what bee got in my bonnet. I watched Vullen Vine's podcast and Kristen Lehrer is Vullen Vine and she showed a quick little video of her doing free motion quilting. She has a nice, she has a nice jukey, so. It looks like she's got a little more room, like wiggle room with it, but she was doing free motion quilting and instead of sewing at her sewing machine like as you normally would, she turned it so it was like facing vertical, vertically towards her uh, with the needle facing this way and then you have free range of motion to like move back and forth and I was like, oh my God, duh. So I was like, I should do that. So I did and it worked and it was great. I'm still like fighting with the throat of the sewing machine to try to like, you know, by the time you get to the bottom of the quilt, you do have to like still roll it up, but there's so much more room to be able to like move it back and forth. And I was like, oh my gosh, like total game changer. I am so proud of the quilting that I did on this. I'm gonna, I'll show it to you on both sides, but I think it's easier to see from the back. So this is the back. I got some like textury white on white fabric, but I just did these like little loopy do's here and the loops kind of extended between like two rows of the block so each one is like each set of loops is like this tall and i kept it in here but it is just really subtle it's very cute it totally does the job it's a nice like not heavy quilted but it's definitely like giving a like a more firm less lofty quilt because there's like so much of it across the whole thing but it's just so stinking cute. I feel so proud of this quilting on this particular quilt. This does remind me of something like a little more store-bought than I normally do. And that's not always what I go for. That's actually never what I go for. But I think it was nice to have this project and like this vibe in mind for someone who I knew, you know, would appreciate it. The free motion quilting thing is like such a game changer. It went so fast. I'm pretty sure I quilted this thing in like an hour. So quick. It was so fun. It was very enjoyable. I actually snagged Penny. Penny came out of her room while I was doing this. And I said, Penny, can you film me free motion quilting so I can like send it to my um, crafty group chat? And she did. So I will put it here on the screen for you to observe. The other thing that really changed the game for me was getting a pair of quilting gloves. Everyone on the planet who talks about like quilting notions and maybe stuff you'll need, uh, some stuff you can do without, I have heard quilting gloves positioned as a optional like quilting excess, like they're not optional. I am here to tell you if you're gonna start quilting and doing your quilting portion at home, not just piecing, get the stupid gloves. They changed everything for me. Less shoulder pain, I can move this thing around like nobody's business. It helps with binding, it helps with quilting. Like the gloves, total game changer and you don't even need quilting gloves you can just go get some like garden grippy gloves you know what i mean something with like resistance i am blessed and cursed with incredibly soft hands i have like no i remember when i had to get fingerprinted when i used to work at the bank just to like start the job you have to go get your fingerprints done and like they could not get any fingerprints of mine because my i just have like nothing like no grip no texture no, like nothing they're just smooth. And the gloves have like totally opened my eyes. And really just, it's less force 
on my physical body, which is great. Um, so if you are a quilter and you don't have a pair of the quilting gloves, or if you're thinking about quilting, please count the gloves as like a necessity. We spend so much money on fabric and thread and sewing machines and lights and like all the materials and everything, buy the gloves. Like you will, you will like it. That's my spiel about that. I love, love how sweet this turned out. There's so many little bears. Oh, they're so cute. This line was really sweet. There's some like little stars and moons. Oh, just adorable. And again, like I got these uh, mini charm squares on sale. I do the chain piecing, which is super easy to do. It makes everything go really quickly, I think. You know, for patchwork stuff, you can get your length mapped out and if you're doing like a checkerboard thing with like every other one it's just so easy it's very like visual kind of like unfolds right in front of you so this is my free motion quilting success love it very happy with it after i finished that quilt i was really really wanting more free motion quilting time but i did not feel like putting together a whole quilt <laughs> so a project bag was like not gonna be enough to scratch the itch i actually did do a project bag for a friend of mine who's been wanting one for me and i ended up free motion quilting that and it took like nine minutes and i was like ah that's not enough for me so i i'm very hesitant to say that i wrote an, a quilting pattern because i didn't write it down at all it's just incredibly easy but i thought about a quilting pattern in my head and just kind of like made it happen i actually tried to film a like tutorial slash walkthrough for this on thursday last week i only have tripods for my camera i have like a multitude of tripods i had tripods set up like at every part of my desk it was just like a nightmare um and i got like very far filming through this little like tutorial before i was like these camera angles are like insane so i actually invested in a like a gooseneck bendable tripod for my camera and i have one at the shop but i have to keep it at the shop for like you know making reels and stuff for tattoos i invested in one of those i'm thinking about maybe making another like walkthrough or whatever but also the ladies on quilting youtube can be kind of vicious in the comments i still feel like too new to make like to write this down in a way that would be shared online but i think like for just a small tutorial like i do think it's worth trying again this isn't rocket science i'm like way talking this up anyway my whole point in saying this is that i wanted to have something to free motion quilt so i needed to whip something up very quick that's gonna like scratch that itch so i put together this table runner out of two and a half inch strips from my stash and this is how it turned out it is super wacky it's kind of ugly it's kind of ugly i've been having a moment with like ugly quilt things i guess this is like the natural ebb and flow of life if you will you know sometimes i knit ugly things too like that's just life and it happens i had this like red and gold theme this was some of my focal fabric this is like bugs and flowers where else are you there you are um so there's like bugs and flowers and i liked like the contrast between the white and the black then i put the black with the red and i was like mm, i don't really like that um i don't like these stripes they're not cute and i don't like the like mcdonald's <laughs> mcdonald's color combo that i did here but i think overall like it's not the mona lisa of table runners for sure but it did what i needed it to do i wanted to have something to free motion quilt and a table runner was actually perfect because it's very long i could do like long sweeping you know rows of of stitches so aside from the fact that it's not like the most beautiful thing in the world it is very like fun you know i actually already asked gail my friend if she wanted this uh she's gonna have it in her home somewhere but I just did this like meandering free motion quilting across the whole thing. It was super fun. It's not fabulous and that's okay. I don't need it to be. But yeah, this is a nice, it's got a nice like quilt feel to it. I could definitely see with some practice, the meandering stitch is not as easy as you think it is. It's, or maybe it's not as easy as I thought it was. It will be worth it. Like when I lock it down, 
it will be worth it. Um, my struggle with the meandering stitch is that I think I move too quickly. So like, here's a spot right here. You can see what I'm complaining about. See how most of these are like roundy, loopy. See how this one's like <laughs> pointy? That's kind of like the little blip that I've been getting. And I definitely noticed like from the start of even like this project to the end of it, there was a little bit less of that, which is cool. Progress is progress, like not a big deal. But yeah, it's super fun. I had this leftover, it's not leftover. I don't even think I used it for any, I think this is the first project I broke into this fabric for, but just cheapo like Joanne Fabrics, strawberry like not heirloom quality <laughs> fabric on the back. And then I did this like red binding that matches some of these squares. So again, not the cutest thing in the world. Could be worse. Plus Gil is my like rockabilly queen. This has that sort of vibe. This particular quilt top is the one that I finished like probably now, like an hour ago. So I've been like eyeing up this pattern for a while and I didn't have like a particular use for it i guess because this actually the pattern will give you a 32 by 32 inch finish quilt so like pretty small like pretty tiny not even three feet by three feet i actually was booking a tattoo appointment with my friend like my friend was booking an appointment to get tattooed by me and i was just like putting two and two together that she has a one-year-old i think she's like one one to two years old. She's little, she's like a little baby. And I was like, oh my gosh, I could make that. And if I want it to be like bigger, you know, like after it's done, I can just like add some borders to it. So this is the Moda Love Charm Quilt. This is a free pattern on Fat Quarter Shop. So like I'm not giving anything crazy away. This is the actual pattern photo. This is meant to be done with some background fabric and a charm pack. And I. 100% will be making this again. This is so beautiful. It's very easy and I do think it would be really fun with a charm pack too. So I did not have a charm pack because I've been buying mini charm packs and using them instantly, but I did have some fabric that I've been holding on to that's very special and cute. And my friend that ha is getting tattooed, who's made this appointment with me, um, is also a tattoo artist. So I knew I had a little bit of like leeway in terms of like funky fabric choices. So all that to say, this is the quilt top I just finished this morning. I'm so excited about it. Isn't that fun? Isn't that cute? So you can see like, obviously the middle portion is exactly as is pictured in the pattern, um, but I did add a border onto it and each square is, Four and a, yeah, four and a half inches square. So I added a four and a half inch border and I actually did cornerstones for the first time. This is my first cornerstone border adventure. It was really nice because the the math is, I, th I don't think the math is that hard for like quilt math. I think I just really, really overthink it most of the time. So I try not to overthink it. It worked because the math, math and everything. But I added these borders with the cornerstones just to make it like that much bigger. So it ended up adding four inches to each side, which is fantastic. I think this is like proper stroller size quilt now. I'm very excited. Uh, the tattoo appointment is tomorrow. So I have to, <laughs> I have to finish this up. I have to get quilting. But the fabrics I used were, like I said, just in my stash for a while and I was holding onto them. They're not anything like particularly revolutionary, but I have so much pink fabric and I tend to like hoard pink fabric because it's my, like one of my favorite, favorite kinds of fabric to get. I think you can like dress it up. I think you can dress it down. You can make it funky. You can make it like classy and cool. Um, I just love like pink fabric, pink quilts are just some of my favorite. This, the darker of the two, is some super low contrast like spider web fabric, which I think is so much fun. And then the lighter of the two is a very pale pink. I don't know if it's gonna read as like pink or more of a white, but it is a very pale pink little cherry fabric. And there's like little white dots every so often that probably will be more apparent when I get it on some batting and backing, but. Yeah, I was very reserved with my color choices, which I uh, am almost 
never reserved with my color choices. A lot of that has to do with the fact that like I just don't have large quantities of fabric to make like huge adult size projects consistently and in the same fabrics. So I've been trying like as I'm buying fabric, I've been trying to be more aware of like buying just more quantity because I will go through it faster. I have been giving up the project bag Etsy store gig um, this year. I did like my last shop update very early, like January or something. And I'm like clearing out the rest of my stash there, but buying fabric for project bags and buying fabric for whole quilts is two like totally different stories. So on one hand, it feels like I have a lot of fabric. On the other hand, from a quilting perspective, it's basically like scraps and scrap amounts of fabric. So it was nice that I was able to use less than a yard of each of these fabrics for this guy. Uh, next up for me is the quilting process. I actually have no idea how I'm gonna quilt this. I might do straight lines just because it's, it'd be very easy to just jump in there and do that. And then binding, I have some red and white striped binding that is gonna go really nicely with like the cherry portion here. It's like very rich red like that. Um, striped binding for the outside, which I love. This was that project. I will, since this is like actually a discernible pattern, I will link below to this free pattern in the Fat Quarter Shop. If you have not been to the Fat Quarter Shop free pattern section, I highly encourage you to pop on over and just take a look because there's a lot of stuff to keep you busy, you know? And that's it. That is all the quilts I have to share right now. I do wanna take a moment. I realized that I forgot to, to talk about this at the beginning, but I do wanna take a moment to share about how I've been keeping track of all of my quilting journey. So again, I am primarily a knitter, crocheter, yarn crafter. And because of that, I am so used to having Ravelry and using Ravelry very diligently for like years and years. I've put every single project, like short of a dishcloth on Ravelry with photos, yarn listings, like I take very detailed notes. And it just helps me to, to take a glance at like everything that I'm making because I knit a lot. Like I make a lot of things and give a lot of stuff away. So I tend to like lose track of you know, when did I make that? Or I knew I made this before, like what modifications did I make? And you know, things like that. And so when I started quilting, there's obviously like nothing to keep track of it, you know, in that way. So I started to use the journal function on my cell phone. Um, I have an Apple, I have like an iPhone 14 or something like that. I will put in a little video here of just kind of like me scrolling through my journal entries and it's just really nice to be able to see you know everything that i made at a glance i have like start dates end dates all that stuff and it's just really really interesting to see how far i have come in such a short time if you have the journal function or like even a physical journal or something that you keep track of your quilting info in like let me know in the comments. I'm very curious to see like how everybody tracks everything that they make. I also wanna take a minute to talk about what I'm wearing. I know I totally forgot to talk about that at the beginning of the episode. I actually did not make this, but I was gifted this by a friend of mine, Erin, um, also a tattooer out here. And she went through a crafting crocheting phase and she made this like little crochet top. It like ties around the top and ties around the back and everything. I just love it. She gifted it to me recently. And I'm pretty sure this is like Lily Sugar and Cream like cotton yarn, which like I love, like love it, love it. Um, such a big fan of that. And she lined it and everything. There's like fabric lining in here. It's just like really so sweet and like a different, you know, different like color scheme for me. I love it. Yeah, I just wanted to give it like it's time in the sun. We are going through like relatively springtime transitional weather here in Wilkesbury and I am so over the cold. I'm sick of it. I'm like, I'm, I've had it. I'm really, really over it. Looking forward to springtime, nicer weather. I actually just got some yarn for a summer top that I want to knit for myself. I bought two linen skirts because I've been living in my linen dress. It's been so awesome. Yeah, I have a lot to share with you on the next episode. 
I stopped by the Philly Yarn Crawl, like kind of on accident, totally randomly. And I just spent a lot of money in Philly and that's fine, like that's cool. But I got a lot of really awesome stuff. That is what's to come next episode, like prepare yourself, it's gonna be a doozy. Chicken Darling says thank you for watching. If you've made it this far, I hope you enjoy my quilting journey. It's not perfect, it's not pretty, but you know, it is what it is. So thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you on the next one. Bye.